Today I'm going to share with you a story about a special person in my life, my grandfather. And I'm going to do that because thanks to him I have twisted mindset towards a way of thinking that revolutionized my way of discovering the world. And it's a mindset that is one of the fundamental bases in my work as a scientist. And I'm going to do that because I deeply believe it's a way of thinking and can be very useful to all of you. So, my grandfather. I can vividly remember the feeling of sitting on his legs, listening to his stories. And they were really special stories about stars and planets, ships and trains, and how they work. He was able to tell me the story in a such a convincing way, so that I was the one asking for more and more. And he was immediately capable of feeding my curiosity. He has basically taught me the art of asking questions. The point is, I simply have no memories of my grandfather telling me something like, oh, you cannot understand, stop asking, let me finish first. Never. She was always trying to push me to be curious, to explore and ask for more. And I believe this is probably one of the main reasons why my deep passion about science flourished thanks to him when I was six, and it has never gone away ever since. My grandfather was really a special person, and probably only now I do realize the huge impact he has had in my life. He manufactured my way of thinking. You know, I can say I have learned three main lessons from him. The first one, how engaging and entertaining a great story can be about anything really anything. The second point, the value of listening. You cannot really learn something when your mouth is open, right? And before sharing with you the third lesson I have learned from him, I would like to tell you a bit more about the path that that six-year-old boy took in his life, and how this question-driven process I have learned from my grandfather actually helped me a lot in my life and in my work as a scientist. So, a few years ago, I moved from my beautiful hometown in Italy, the wonderful Sester Levante, to the Netherlands, in Rotterdam. And, you know, it was obviously to follow my deep passion for the Dutch weather. <laughs> and moving to another culture, into another way of thinking, really opens your mind to a different level, to a different perspective, lets you see the things from a different angle. Uh, Roger Lewin, uh, Henry Miller said, one's destination is never a place, but a new way of seeing things. And for me, it's really true. And moving to the Netherlands was really one of the biggest sliding door moments I had in my life. And I believe we can probably all think of at least one moment in our lives, when a big change happens. Something that twisted our way to see and feel the world. A moment in which we made such an important decision that from that day, nothing was the same again. Because something fundamentally changed, and we felt really good. Well, I can tell you there are special cells in our body that are making this sliding door decision right now. I'm talking about stem cells. Stem cells are something incredible, and I try to explain. Do you know, for example, that every four months, we completely replace the entire set of red blood cells we have in our body? It's a continuous process, and needs to be the case, because every single second, three million of those cells died. Think about that. Three million, another three million, another three million, another three million. It's a disaster. From the beginning of my talk, 800 million cells died already. <laughs> but how does it work? How is it possible? Well, this is happening thanks to stem cells and thanks to a process called differentiation, which is something stem cells can do very well, together with another thing, self-replication, so replicate themselves. But with differentiation, something remarkable happens. 
stem cells can become a different kind of cells, potentially any kind of cells in our body, leading eventually to the generation of any kind of tissue. However, not all stem cells are exactly the same. And like us, they have their own preference for what they want to be when they grow up. And what I'm studying at the Erasmus Medical Center are the characteristics a stem cell needs to have to preferably become a cell of one specific tissue. And it's a very important tissue because it's the tissue that allows us to move freely and smoothly. It's the tissue that, when it's damaged, causes chronic pain. And chronic pain is something really debilitating, physically and mentally. The tissue that causes all these problems is called cartilage which is the tissue that cover our bones at joint level. We have cartilage also in other places in the body, but this is the one I'm studying and the one that gives a lot of these problems. And to give you an impression about what chronic pain really is, try to imagine what would mean for you if you cannot even go out for a walk, or you cannot do even simple things like writing or standing up from the chair you are sitting in this very moment because it hurts too much. And this horrible feeling persists every single day of your life. It's devastating. And believe me, truly undeserved. The good news is that stem cells can be the solution for this problem, but we have to find the best one, the one that are able to make this transition between being a stem cells to be a cartilage cells in the best way possible. So how can we do that? Well, normally scientists select stem cells by looking for certain characteristics on the surface of the cells. However, by twisting perspective and start asking myself questions, which is basically what my grandfather told me, I have realized that we shouldn't always judge a book by its cover. So imagine, for example, that these are two stem cells. What I found is that sometimes they have identical surfaces, but a very, very different content. And now, with new technologies available, I can mark and select stem cells for the content I want which is indicative for the presence of specific factors that are able to, in a way, regulate this twist of a stem cell into a cartilage cell. And guess what? The name of one of these factors is twist. And the best way I can describe you the magic is that stem cells that have a lot of these twists are also really good at making cartilage. But what can we actually do with all this information? Well, try to convince you that we can do quite a lot of interesting things, because we can, for example, study a way to stimulate the expression of these twisting stem cells to improve their capacity to regenerate a tissue. Or we can study how differences and changes in our body due to inflammation, stress, hormone levels, diseases or injuries are able to modify the expression of this twist and in response to that, develop solutions to interfere with these processes. And we can study all these different scenarios thanks to a model that we have generated in our lab by which we can artificially create a damage into the cartilage and study the best way to combine different kinds of stem cells, stimuli and growth factors and materials to repair the cartilage in the best way possible. And the point is that recently we are going even further than that. Because this wonderful, curiosity-driven process called science let us start wondering, but what if the best stem cell we can ever pick are actually the one we already have in our body? that simply need a bit of a trigger. And with new technology available, now this is becoming reality. Because we can now try to develop specific materials that are able 
to first recruit the stem cells in the tissue we want to repair, and once the stem cells arrive to destination, specific signals from inside this material will able to tell a stem cells to become, for example, a cartilage cells. And I strongly believe in the future we will have materials specifically designed for each of the tissue in our body. And we simply have to wait that the body does the rest. And I believe this future is even closer than you think. And with this, I'd like to bring you back to the beginning of my talk, because I still own you the third lesson I have learned from my grandfather, which is probably the most important one, the one that helped me in science, as I hope I have just demonstrated to you, but also beyond that. And the third lesson is to think critically about anything. Just don't take things for granted but you ask yourself the why of things. This is how science progresses, by asking questions and looking for solutions. Try to give you another example. What if I tell you that water can boil and freeze at the same temperature? Well, if you don't know the answer, you have basically three options. Or you believe in me, or you don't believe in me, or you ask, how does it work? That's critical thinking. Ask yourself, how does it work? Roger Lewin went beautifully to the point when he said, too often we give our children answer to remember rather than problem to solve. And in this area in which a lot of news is fake and a lot of people pretend online to be expert of a given topic, it's more important than ever to be a critical thinking to distinguish between what is true and what is not true, what is relevant and what is not relevant, what is science and what is not science. But critical thinking is even more than that, because critical thinking helps you to effectively act in the world. It helps you to convincingly explain your rights. It helps you to, you know, win the battle you undertake. It is one of the most fundamental weapons we have against ignorance. And you know, we all have to make a decision in life, right? Like which politician to vote next time, for example. And being able to spot how much of it is fake, well, can be very useful. We need to teach critical thinking. We need to teach and learn how to pose questions. Where to start? Well, I would suggest by doing what my grandfather did with me. Take something you have passion about. Tell your story about that. Spread your story about that. And as long as you get questions in return, well, probably means that you are doing a very good job. This process twisted my life and can twist yours and those of the people around you. Thank you.